Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppele. In this video I will discuss the completeness of the real number system. This is an important property of real numbers. Many of the results that we use to study functions depend on this completeness of the real number system. All sets considered in this presentation are assumed to be non-empty. We will start by some very natural definitions. We say that a number capital M is an upper bound of a set A if uh, all elements of A are at most capital M. Observe that a set need not have upper bounds because, uh, for example, the set of integers contains arbitrarily large integers, therefore it has no upper bounds. We say that a set A is bounded from above if it has a finite upper bound. In the same way, we say that a number small case m is a lower bound of a set A if all elements of A are at least this number small case m. Then the set A is bounded from below if it has a finite lower bound. And we say finally that the set A is bounded if it is bounded from above and from below. Integers, rational numbers and real numbers have different behaviors regarding upper and lower bounds. Start by observing that uh, a finite non-empty set of numbers is always bounded because among the elements of a finite set one may always choose the greatest element and the least element. The greatest element is also the smallest upper bound of a finite set and the least element is the largest lower bound. Any non-empty set of integers bounded from above has always the greatest element, which is also an integer. This greatest element is the least upper bound of such a set. For example, consider all integers which are at most square root of 17. Now, square root of 17 is not an integer itself. It's a number between 4 and 5. So all integers at most square root of 17, that set contains all integers up to the integer 4. Therefore, this set has the largest element, which is the integer 4, and it is also an upper bound, and it is the least upper bound for this particular set. Consider the set of all rational numbers R such that R squared is at most 2. This set is clearly bounded both from above and from below, because certainly all rational numbers for which R squared is at most 2 lie between negative 2 and 2. In fact, in the set of real numbers, this set of rational numbers for which R squared is at most 2 is contained in the interval from a negative of square root of 2 to square root of 2. So this set A is bounded. It has certainly many rational upper bounds and many rational lower bounds. But the set of rational upper bounds does not have the least element. So, in the set of rational numbers, the set A, which is bounded, does not have the least upper bound, because its least upper bound would have to be square root of 2. But square root of 2 is not a rational number. So, the, in the set of rational numbers, the set A does not have the least upper bound. It does have the least upper bound in the set of real numbers among real numbers, and that least upper bound is square root of 2. But there are, of course, uh, infinitely many rational numbers which are larger than square root of 2, and among those ones there is no smallest rational number which is larger than square root of 2. And this means that the set of rational numbers is not complete. 
let uh, capital A be a non-empty subset of real numbers which is bounded from above. There is an important completeness property of real numbers and this completeness property says that among all the upper bounds of this bounded set A there is a unique least upper bound. This unique least upper bound is called the supremum of this set A and the notation for that is sup A this means the supremum of the set A that is the least upper bound for this set A. So if the set is finite like say in the case the set is negative 1, 1, 2 and 5 then we simply select the greatest element and that is also the supremum of this particular set. So the supremum of the set uh, minus 1, 1, 2 and 5 is 5. Now let A be the set uh, consisting of numbers which are of the form 1 minus 2 to the power negative n where n is a natural number. So n starts from 0, 1, 2 and so forth. So this 2 to the power negative n, when n is 0, is just 1. When n is 1, it is uh, 1 half. When n is 2, it is 1 fourth, and so forth. So this 2 to the power negative n approaches 0 as n grows. This means that uh, the elements 1 minus 2 to the power negative n approach 1 as n grows. And this means that 1, which is certainly an upper bound for the set A, is also the least upper bound. So supremum of this set capital A is 1 in this case. Now, infimum is defined in the same way as supremum. So the completeness of real numbers says that if the set a is bounded from below then it has the unique greatest lower bound and this unique greatest lower bound is called the infimum of the set capital A it is denoted by inf A that is the infimum of A and uh, the infimum of a finite set is the smallest element of the set so infimum of the set negative 1 1 2 and 5 is negative 1 and uh, the infimum of the set 1 plus to the power negative n is 1 because uh, these elements 1 plus to the power negative n get arbitrarily close to 1 as n grows. However, all elements 1 plus to the power negative n, they are all greater than 1. So 1 is a lower bound and it is largest lower bound because no number which is larger than 1 can be a lower bound for this particular set, capital A. The concept of the least upper bound, that is the supremum of a set, is rather challenging to characterize mathematically precisely. The following theorem is a characterization. We say that a number S is a supremum, that is the least upper bound, of a set capital A, if and only if the following two conditions hold. Condition 1. The number S is an upper bound of the set capital A, that is, all elements, small case A, of the set capital A are at most S. Condition 2. For all positive numbers epsilon, one can always find an element small case a of the set capital A such that the absolute value of S minus A is less than epsilon. This is an if and only if statement. We must show that if the conditions 1 and 2 hold, then the number S is a supremum, that is the least upper bound of the set A, and conversely, we must show that if S is a least upper bound of the set A, then it satisfies conditions 1 and 2. Now, 
assume that S is the least upper bound of the set capital A. Then S is also an upper bound, therefore the condition 1 is trivially satisfied. To prove that the condition 2 also holds, assume that it does not. Then there is a positive number epsilon such that there are no elements small case A of the set capital A with the absolute value of S minus A less than epsilon. So this in the case the condition 2 does not hold. But if that is the case, then also S minus epsilon is an upper bound of the set capital A. But since S is the smallest upper bound of the set capital A, there cannot be any smaller upper bounds, therefore S minus epsilon cannot be an upper bound, and hence this is impossible. And this proves that if S is a supremum of the set capital case A, then it satisfies conditions 1 and 2. Conversely, we must show that if uh, the number S satisfies conditions 1 and 2, then S is the least upper bound of the set capital A. So we now assume that S satisfies conditions 1 and 2. We must show that S is an upper bound of the set capital A, and that it is smallest of all upper bounds. The fact that S is an upper bound is immediate because that is what condition 1 says. Condition 1 says that all elements of the set capital A are at most S, therefore S is an upper bound. Now, to show that S is the least upper bound, assume that it is not the least upper bound and if that is the case, then there is an upper bound T, which is smaller than S. Now, if T is an upper bound of A, then between T and S, there are no elements of A. Therefore, if we take epsilon to be S minus T, which now is a positive number, it follows that S does not satisfy condition 2 for this number epsilon. But we did assume that S satisfies condition 2. This means that we cannot find a smaller upper bound T, that is an upper bound T less than S for A. Therefore, S is the smallest upper bound of A. This proves the characterization. The largest lower bound, that is the infimum of a set, can be characterized precisely in the same way as what the supremum was characterized a moment ago. We say that a number R is uh, the largest lower bound, that is the infimum, of a set capital A, if and only if the following two conditions hold. 1. R is a lower bound of the set capital A, that is, all elements of the set capital A are greater or equal to R. Secondly, for all positive numbers epsilon, there must be a number A in the set capital A such that the absolute value of R minus A is less than epsilon. The proof of this characterization for the largest lower bound is step by step the same as the proof of the corresponding characterization for the smallest upper bound, supremum. For a set capital case A of real numbers, define the set 2 times capital case of A as being the set obtained by multiplying each element of the set capital case A by 2. Now, assuming that supremum of the set capital case A is finite, then we next show that supremum of 2 times capital case A is 2 times supremum of A. So in the claim on the left hand side we have the supremum of the set 2 times capital case A. On the right hand side we have product of two numbers, namely the number 2 
and the number supremum of the set capital case A. We prove this claim by using the characterization for a supremum. This characterization states that a number S is a supremum of a set capital case A if and only if two conditions hold. First, the number S is an upper bound of the set capital case A. And secondly, for any positive number epsilon, the resolve is a number small case A in the set capital case A such that the absolute value of S minus small case A is less than epsilon. We wish to show that supremum of the set 2 times A is 2 times supremum of the set A. And we show this in two parts. We first observe that by its definition, supremum of a set is an upper bound of the set. Therefore, any element small case A of the set capital case A is at most supremum of capital case A. Now, multiplying by 2, we obtain that 2 times small case A is at most 2 times supremum of capital case A. And this means that 2 times supremum of capital case A is an upper bound of the set capital case A. That is, 2 times supremum of capital case A is greater or equal to supremum of 2 times capital case A. We wish to prove that they are equal. To that end, we must use the second part of the characterization of the supremum. It is a part involving the number epsilon. So let epsilon be a positive number. We have to show that there is a number small case A in the set capital case A, such that the absolute value of 2 times supremum of capital case A minus 2 times small case A is less than epsilon. So we have to find such an element small case A. To do that, we observe that since epsilon is positive, also epsilon divided by 2 is positive, and then by the characterization of the supremum of the set capital case A, we can find a number small case A in the set capital case A such that the absolute value of supremum of capital case A minus small case A is less than epsilon over 2. Now, multiplying both sides by 2, we get that the absolute value of 2 times supremum of A minus 2 times A is less than epsilon. This proves a claim. This proves that 2 times supremum of capital case A is the smallest upper bound for the set 2 times A. In this video, we have discussed the completeness of the set of real numbers. It is uh, a very important property of the set of real numbers, not enjoyed by the set of rational numbers. The completeness property of the set of real numbers says that any bounded subset of the set of real numbers has unique least upper bound and unique greatest lower bound. The unique least upper bound is called the supremum and the unique greatest lower bound is called the infimum of this set.